Hey everybody, we're Mickey and Gary Brown from Mickey and the Motor Cars, and this is Real Life and Real Music. Real Life, Real Music Radio, with your host, Kyle Hutton. Well, howdy, gentlemen. How are y'all doing? How's it going? Good. Yeah? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good since, uh, you know... It's been a long time since I saw you, about uh, 15 minutes ago at the bar at Carabas. Yeah, I was going to say, it hasn't been that long. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> interesting to run into you here. No, thank you guys for coming in. Uh, we're going to get to talk a little bit about where you guys have been in COVID. And man, you guys, uh, you, you guys travel in from a long way now to do shows together, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But I appreciate you coming down on a Tuesday night to the Woodlands to hang out with us. Well, we're glad to be here, man. Thank you so much for having us, and thank you guys for coming out on a Tuesday. Let's get this guitar tuned up here. Come on, girl. We, uh, we always play all of our stuff, but uh, we also get to play a few covers every once in a while, but... Usually we like to kick it off just because it's fun. One of our favorite songwriters, Mr. Bob Dylan. It's a song that he did with Mr. Johnny Cash. Well, if you travel in the North Country Fair Where the winds hit heavy on the old borderline Please say hello to the one who lives there For she wants what's the true love of mine well, See for me that her hair's hanging down And rolls and flows Out down her breast You see for me That her hair's hanging down And that's the way that I remember her best And if you go Where the snowflakes fall Winter's phrase and your summer ends. Well, see for me, she's wearing a coat so warm to shield her from all the howling winds. And if you're traveling in the North Country Fair, where the winds hit heavy out on the old Please say hello to the one who lives there. She wants words, true love of mine. She wants words, true love of mine. Dylan. Very nice. Gary, you doing all right over there? Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's hard to see you. I'm doing well. It's hard, it's hard to see through your brother. Yeah. <laughs> Story That's all right. <laughs> you ever try to watch TV with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, my dad used to say when I'd get in front of him, in front of him and in between him and the TV when the baseball game is on, his phrase was that I've been drinking muddy water. So you've been drinking muddy water. Is that better? You guys see each other now? Make a, a better door better? than a window. <laughs> <laughs> now my video guy's going to go, you need to scoot back six now, inches. Now you need to scoot forward. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, okay, man, first, tell us, uh, you, you, you came in from Boston. You've been spending a lot of time up in the yeah. Northeast. And then, uh, Gary, you know, you've split in time between Austin and Idaho. Tell us a little bit about uh, wh where you were before you got here and maybe where you've been holed up during some of this craziness where we've all been putting off shows and, and just not able to be as consistent as we want to be. Just give us a quick update on, on where you've been. Um, well, I personally have been out in uh, Boston for uh, a lot of the time during the COVID craziness, and uh, my fiance's out there and our daughter, and uh, we just kind of uh, been going back and forth between there and uh, Austin, and, and then uh, we have our cabin out in Idaho, a little, tiny little cabin that I built a uh, long time ago and still working on it. It's about halfway done <laughs> but uh we kind of just been bouncing around following the weather and uh enjoying uh getting to hang out with each other which is really nice because i'm usually always on the road so uh to be able to spend time with the girls has been wonderful for me and their family and my family and everybody's been getting to kind of hang out in different spots whether it's austin or boston or idaho and yeah. that's uh getting some work done on the on the ranch and it's been great yeah well i saw your daughter last time we were all at steamboat which was what a couple of years back now how yeah. old is she now she uh she turned three in june so wow yeah. cool that's awesome yeah she's growing up already but, talking back <laughs> yeah enough to where i'm like yeah okay cool get a job and Gary, where, where have you been spending your time? I know you've got a place out in Idaho as well. Yeah, I've kind of been back and forth between Idaho and Austin, uh, a place in Austin and a place in Idaho. So I, I try to kind of work around the weather when it's hot down here. I go up there and uh, vice versa. Yeah. It gets cold up there in the winter. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Which I like the winter, but it's nice to be able to leave and come back down to Texas where it's 80 degrees, you know, play a little golf or whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the big deal for us growing up in South Texas was whether or not we were going to, you know, have to wear long pants on Christmas or not. Right. We played football in the front yard. You know what I mean? You remember yeah. that? Okay. So uh, I, I want to talk to you and, and get into a more in-depth conversation because I think it's just interesting for us as music fans um, and, and seeing, you know, what's happened over the last couple of years. And it's a conversation specific to the record that you put out uh, in 2019 called Long Time Coming. But before I delve into like some of the questions that I have about that record, um, I, I wonder if you would just pick one of the songs from it. Tell, tell us about it uh, and, and play it for us. Yeah, um, well, I think one that probably got the, uh, the juices flowing, if you will, was Gary came over one day uh, to my house and said he had a song that he wanted me to look at and see if I wanted to write with him. And, um, I said, yeah, come on over. And he sat down and he played what he had for me, which was uh, the better part of the first verse and uh, the chorus. And I said, man, I love it. Let's do it. Let's write that song, uh, or we'll try to anyway. And we sat down, we started writing it, and everything went really well. And then uh, we just kind of bounced back and forth over the next couple of weeks uh, working on the tweaks and whatnot. But uh, uh, it was a song. It's a song called Rodeo Girl which was, um, we ended up putting it out as our last single. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went to number one on the charts, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But now we, uh, we had a really good time writing it, and we wrote it, uh, both Gary and I rode horses a lot and uh, rodeoed a bit and worked on ranches and stuff when we were younger, and it was, uh, it was a, a very easy write for us as far as uh, being able to uh, work with the terminology and all the fun stuff yeah. that went along with it, but uh, we kind of wrote it more as far as instead of the uh, the cowboy being the hero at the end, it's more about the cowgirl being the hero. As she usually is, as right? At the end of the day, <laughs> usually she is, yeah. I thought it was a love song. Well, it is a love song. <laughs> but yeah, this one's called Rodeo Girl. When they open the gate, I'll be riding for it. Sometimes I hit the ground. 
Face down in the mud in front of my love in another cowboy town. If I lose my money, it's all right, honey. I can always count on you. You ride your best, you win the worst, we always do. And we're gonna ride tonight. If I could keep it in the middle, baby, everything would work out fine. I've already won the world just having you by my side. My rodeo girl. Way well, patch me up when I'm busted up. You know just what to do. My lovely little rodeo cat girl always pulls me through. You take the reins and you ease my pain when I'm broken, battered, and bruised. You know me, honey, I'll always be love struck buckaroo. And we're gonna ride the night. If I can keep it in the middle, baby, everything will work out fine. If I already won the world, just having you by my side. My We sitting on top of the tenth, go around you under Sin City lights. You got nothing to lose, so turn her head loose and let that pony fly. Then I'll be looking for you from the back of the chutes. I got one left to go. Either win or lose, I still have you, so either way I wanna go. Yeah, we're gonna ride tonight. If I could keep it in the middle, baby, everything would work out fine. If I already won the world, just having you by my side. You're my rodeo, yeah, you're my rodeo. You're my rodeo, girl. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate you. Claire, that one's for you. Yeah. <laughs> She's glad about that. Met her right before the show. Did you? Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's great. Hey, I'm going to say, I, I want to say this. I've, I've gotten to sit on stage with you guys, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how many times now. Our real life run music stuff, but then just stuff at festivals and whatever. Um, man, uh, you guys sound great. COVID's been good to you. You sound good. Thank you. You're welcome. We're trying. No, yeah, hey, dude. Your, your harmonies, and I'm, I'm just sitting, I, I had them put a substantial amount in my wedge so I could enjoy it tonight. <laughs> you guys, you guys sound super, man. So, thank you. So going back to the record, Long Time Coming, you know, uh, and this is not, it, it's not an unfamiliar story. I, I mean, you can imagine how many artists were releasing projects right as COVID hit, right? And then we've had this lag in the ability to go out and actually, you know, perform those songs for uh, the people that want to hear it and, and get new fans and do all the things yeah. you do to keep things going down the road. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us a little bit, because I know Long Time Coming is a, is a big record for you guys and unfortunately like you know a lot of us in different professions the last couple of years has has really put a damper on that yeah it's uh it was one of those deals that you can't really do anything but just accept it but uh we uh we put the record out and we had about two months of uh being able to tour it and and cover our our first single on it 
and uh yeah then everything kind of shut down and we had to uh just kind of roll with the punches and see what happened and uh you know we we tried to keep uh our songs on the radio because that was where people could listen to us and um we really couldn't go out and play live shows with people and uh, see our friends or co-write or do anything that we normally do so it was a hard time uh to put out a record but um like you say, there was so many other artists, friends of ours, and people that we don't know that were trying to do the same thing at the same yeah. time. And um, for us, it was, you know, kind of a time to just accept that and sit down in the corner and write songs and and tinker around with old songs and, you know, try and keep the band together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the, the upshot of the whole thing though putting a new album out with new music during that time was everybody else was stuck at home too you know so they had new mm -hmm. music to listen yeah. to and maybe spent a little more time with it than they would have if it would have just popped out in the middle of their summer plans yeah you know so i mean i don't know there was i think pros and cons of the whole deal like depending on if you want to look at it half full or half empty <laughs> <laughs> right right for a for sense sure. i mean but we got through covid no problem we just sat tight and yeah uh yeah, I mean, kind of sucked, like it sucked for everybody, but we're, uh, at least we're back at it now, and we're glad to be back. Yeah, yeah. no doubt, no doubt. We're, we're glad, too. So what one thing that's been interesting to me is, is uh, some artists tell me that they really uh, were able to use the time off as, as a creative, you know, outlet to write songs. And, and then other artists, you know, were like, hey, man, I'm spending time with my family. I'm doing other things that I don't normally get to do on the road, and I focused on that. So where did you guys fall in that category? Did you, did you ride a bunch during, during, during uh, quarantine? I kind of uh, focused on fly fishing. And <laughs> all right, all right, right fair enough. ATVs. No, we, we did a lot of everything. I mean, I think we, we all, at least me and Mickey both spent a lot of time writing, but we also spent a lot of time just doing normal family type stuff that we hadn't really had an opportunity to do we'd never been home for six months so yeah um it was that was kind of like a whole new experience for me and i'm sure him too yeah with a new baby and all that yeah. jazz yeah yeah it was it was a really good time to uh focus on a lot of a lot of stuff like i tried to write and then if i just wasn't feeling it i i didn't and uh but yeah for the most part i kind of did the same as Gary and we just kind of did whatever we wanted to for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Which, I get you. So it was kind of a pro on on our end. For the first time, it was it was tough getting by, but at the same time, it was uh, something that I I will never probably get back again as far mm. as get to do that again, to where I I have that much time off to just really enjoy being with the family and uh, getting to. Uh, Walk around in your, your boxers all day, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So before I ask you about new stuff that you wrote in COVID, I want to ask you about the, uh, the first single that you released off a long time coming called Road to You. Mm -hmm. tell, us, uh, tell us a little bit about that one and play it for us. Um, I wrote that song with uh, Courtney Patton, my good friend. We wrote that. Um, yeah. She, um, <laughs> she called me up and uh, just said she had a song that she had started and um, wanted to, she was like, do you, I want to send it to you, but if you don't want to write, we don't have to write. And I was like, hey, Courtney, just send me the song. And uh, so she sent over what she had and I uh, was like, I love it, it's great. Um, she was living in Stephenville, which I think she's still up there for sure, actually. And uh, she was like, well, uh, you can come up here, I'll drive down either way. And I was like, well, let's just figure out either one works for me, Tuesday works for me. And she was like, oh, that's perfect. I got to be there on Wednesday anyway. So. She was playing at the Saxon Pub on Wednesday. So she came down on Tuesday, and uh, we just hung out in the living room and uh, drank a couple glasses of wine and, and wrote the tune. And uh, I had sent her some, some ideas on what I thought where it could go, and it was ended up being a really quick, fun afternoon, easy write. And um, yeah, then she ended up putting it on her record, and... I was like, well, I'm going to put it on my record, too, if that's all right. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> go for it. Awesome. I'd love it. And, uh, yeah, so we did, and then that ended up being our first single. So listen to this right now, and then go listen to Courtney Patton's version.
Well, I kicked out the year in Boise, Idaho. Snow's coming down in shades. These New Year's blues are like breaking in boots. I got blisters nobody can see. Two ball tires and one headlight, and they're closing down 93. And if everything goes the way it should, darling, I'll be seeing you later this week. The road to you. Well, it's windy, steep, and cold. The road to you. Made of concrete, gray, and gold. And I drive all night and I keep it inside like a lighthouse standing alone. And the moon over Custer County tonight is calling me back home. Baby, what a drive, but the stars are aligning, so don't you give up on me. We can meet up in Austin at our little spot under the big oak at Barton Springs. I'm two days in and too many cups down and I'm just past Abilene. I'm a little bit north of the heart of Texas, carrying yours and me. The road to you, well it's windy, steep and cold. The road to you, made of concrete, gray and gold. And to drive all night and to keep it inside like a lighthouse standing alone. And the moon over Callahan County tonight is calling me back home. As the sun rises beside me, I say goodnight to my old friend. Tired miles I lay behind me They were the right to find the end To this road to you That's windy, steep and cool The road to you Made of concrete gray and gold and I drive all night and I keep it inside like a lighthouse standing alone. And the moon over Coal County tonight is calling me back home. Yeah, the moon over Coal County tonight is calling me back home. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very nice. So y'all wrote the song fast and then finished the bottle of wine. Is that kind of how that co-write went? No, we finished the bottle of wine and then we wrote it fast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. That's the proper no, order. We had fun. She's a really fun person to write with and uh, just such a great, great songwriter and great person to be around. And she's got such a good attitude and I don't know. We've been uh, best pals for a long time now. I was uh, Jason Eady, her uh, husband, is uh, one of my favorite person or people, should I say, <laughs> to uh, write with. And yeah. uh, he's just a great guy. And we started writing probably, ooh, probably sixteen or seventeen years ago. Wow! And so it was fun to finally get to write a tune with her, and yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so let's. I mean, I, I kind of want to put y'all on the spot and and ask you if there's anything that's uh, that's new that hasn't been recorded yet that uh, maybe came about in the last eighteen months or whatever that we could uh, that we could get a listen to tonight. You got anything? <laughs> not at that. No, no. If you'd asked me yesterday, I could have brought something new. <laughs> Yesterday, but I only got halfway through it. 
But, and the other ones that I've written have got uh, a bunch of cuss words in them, so I don't know how you can put those on here. I'll play you something new, though, that I didn't write, if that's all right. Yeah, for sure. This song is, um, Mick and I grew up out west, and this is a tune that a guy named Gary McMahon, who was a cowboy poet, wrote. He wasn't really a songwriter, but then he kind of became one all of a sudden and wrote a bunch of great songs. But I think this song's cool. It's kind of an old ranch song. Travis, is this working? Can I get some of the monitor, please? Cool, thanks. Anyways, the song was written by Gary McMahon, and it's uh, new to you guys. It's called uh, The Old Double Diamond. Auctioneers graveled how they wrapped and rattled as I watched the old double diamond go. Won't you listen to the wind? Mother Nature's violin. When I first hired on the old was a damn poor excuse for a man Never learned how to aim When my spirit was tame Couldn't read all the cards in my hand And the wind whipped the granite above me Blew the tumbleweeds clean through my soul I fought her winners, busted her horses, took more than I thought I could stand. But the mountains and the battle with cattle, they seemed to bring out the best in a man. I guess the sailor needs an ocean. Mama, her baby's too old. I need the hills of Wyoming in the land of the buffalo. Now she's selling out. I'm moving on, but I'm leaving with more than I came. I've got my saddle And I'm not for sale And I've got these songs that I sing Find a new range to ride And new knots to tie In a country where the cowboy is king Turn my tail to the wind and the old as I disappear into the sage. Thanks. My dad used to play that when I was a little kid. And I was thinking about it the other day, and I, we had this acoustic show coming up, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll learn a new song. Yeah. You know, I was like, why learn one that you wrote? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Uh, okay, so are you guys doing okay out there? Is everybody having fun so far? Okay. I told you there were going to be moments where I really needed you to be an active participant in the show, and that's, this, is, this is your big moment right now, okay? Because here's what we need to do. We need to do a liner to kick off the show, guys. So if y'all can do... This is Mickey and Gary Braun, and this is real life, real music. And then y'all are going to go nuts. 
Okay. Can y'all do that? Yeah. All right. And go nuts, go nuts until I go like this. Okay. <laughs> It'll be about seven minutes and then I'll, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey everybody, we're Mickey and Gary Brown from Mickey and the Motor Cars and this is Real Life and Real Music. We good over there? All right, checking with the checking right. with the talent I over there. I can't do that again. No, that was good. You you remembered <laughs> you remembered all the words. Damn it was it. perfect. <laughs> It was pre- okay, I, I want to go ahead and, and, and ask about one of my favorite uh, songs of, of all time from uh, Mickey and the Motor Cars, and that is a little song off of the uh, Hearts from Above record that you released in 2014 called Tonight We Ride. Uh-huh, yeah. Tell us, t- I want to hear the backstory on that one, uh, and don't disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's actually a song that a friend of mine wrote. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> now, I, uh, I came up with the, uh, the idea for that, and um, I just started tinkering around with it. It was just always kind of a, a joke that we would say at the end of the night when we'd get done with the shows. We'd uh, hanging out with our friends or our brothers or whatever, and, uh, and everyone would be like, so you guys going back to the hotel and going to bed, or what's going on? We'd always be like, out tonight we ride. <laughs> so we'd have fun with that. And uh, anyway, after a long time, I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a song called Tonight We Ride. And I, I know that Michael Martin Murphy has a, uh, a song called Tonight We Ride, but um, I still was like, I don't care. I'm still going to write a song <laughs> called Tonight We Ride. And uh, so I brought the idea. I brought the first verse and the chorus to, uh, to Willie, my brother, and... Uh, he was living over at a joint uh, in Austin, and, and he was like, well, come over, I'm cooking, so why don't you just come over and eat, and we'll sit down and see what we get out of it. And uh, I was like, well, mind if I bring my buddy Brian Keene? And he was like, yeah, no, absolutely, bring Brian over. So I was like, all right. So we went over there, and me and Brian and Willie sat down and just started tinkering at it and uh, eating and again drinking wine and uh we just had fun and wrote the song but we just kind of it's kind of a wave of of tunes through uh you know the the civil war and and different parts of uh history basically is what we kind of started out in the castle days and then we moved to the civil war and then we ended up with uh more or less uh Billy the Kid kind of cowboy style, uh, people stealing horses and cattle and yeah. that kind of stuff. So, And if there was a fourth verse, I think it would be about nights that I've seen you guys in Steamboat, Colorado. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think exactly. I've even heard y'all say that. Tonight we ride. Tonight I'm we like, ride. oh my goodness. <laughs> and juice. Yeah, it's a real, it's a peach. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a... Uh, it's always a fun one to play live with the band because it's one of our rockers, so it's a little different when you're playing acoustic. But yeah. Tell the man to gather their gear, polish their armor, and sharpen their steel tonight. Tonight we ride. Tell the children. Gather their tears, polish their armor, and sharpen their steel tonight. Tonight we ride. Tell the runner to ride like who, and if he's taken, don't ever tell that tonight. That tonight we ride. Yeah, tonight. Tomorrow went by through the ones that were left behind. Tonight we're at. When the people start leaving their farms, taking up arms, it's time to start choosing sides. 
that we ride When the smoke clears and both sides lose No matter their colors, gray or blue, it's time And tonight we ride yeah, tonight we ride Tomorrow we fight through the ones that we left behind Tonight we ride Sometimes all that matters broken and shattered it'll drive a man over the line tonight we ride sometimes when you run out of room you see by the light of a rustler's mount of night and tonight we ride Yet or not we ride yeah. Man, that's a Thank great you. song. Such a great song. The first time I heard that song on the radio, man, I was like, that is a that is a hit. I love that song. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, it's, it's always so weird when you do these acoustic songs. You're so used to playing with a band. And having everybody, you know, you got the the drums and the keyboards and the steel guitar and everything behind you. And then when you do it acoustic, it, it really brings you back to uh, when you wrote when the song yeah. for the first time. And you're like, wow, that's right. That's how that goes. <laughs> 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 I like it better now. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but that's, I mean, that is one of the cool things for me. Uh, about acoustic shows uh, is I usually get to know the songs of my favorite artists from from their their studio recordings, you know. Yeah. And then you you get to hear it kind of more in the format of of you know how you and in uh, Willie sat down and you know and Brian sat down and really were hearing that thing when you wrote it. Um, yeah. So I was down in the studio in Houston today with. Uh, Walt Wilkins, and he told me to tell you guys hello. Oh, hello back. Hello back, Walt. Walt. He's one of my favorites, man. He, I got a great, uh, a fun story about him. Uh, we were hanging out at Green Hall one afternoon during Americana Fest, and uh, or the Americana Jam, sorry. And uh, we were uh, just shooting the breeze, if you will, and uh, having a good time, and... Uh, he was wearing this pair of boots, and I was like, man, that's a great pair of boots. Where'd you get those? And he was like, oh, I got them from this, this company, Durango, and they, they give us a pair of boots and uh, one pair a year and yada, yada. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. He's like, what, what size of foot are you? And I was like, I'm a nine and a half. And he's like, oh, that's cool, man. I'm a, I'm a nine and a half, too. And I was like, oh, well, cool. And then uh, I was talking to his wife, Tina, later, and uh, I told him, I was, like, I was like, oh, those are a great pair of boots that he's got. And I went down and saw him at the Saxon Pub about, probably three months later and uh after their show he came walking up to me and he just had a pair of his pair of boots in his hand and he goes <laughs> he goes i want you to have this pair of boots <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. so i took my boots off and gave them to him and <laughs> he gave me his pair of boots and we swapped boots at the saxon pub and yeah, yeah. W was it a fair trade <laughs> not for him <laughs> <laughs> Mine were pretty worn out. <laughs> oh, man. Walt, but, Walt well, he's is just he the guy from guy. Breaking Bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. No, Walt Walt is, uh, man, I, I've, I've, I've loved Walt uh, as a songwriter. I mean, songs like, you know, Ruby's Two Sad Daughters. And, I mean, if you don't know Walt Wilkins, you need to, you, you should go look him up because he's influenced so many uh, of the writers uh, that you'll see in the Texas Red Dirt scene. And uh, uh, I, I guess, gosh, it was the first season that we did this show, 
he, he came on the show and it was my first time to ever meet him. So I was yeah. like so nervous because I was such a big fan. Yeah. And he's so, so nice. He didn't give me a pair of boots, but, uh, <laughs> but, but he was really, he was really nice. And I, I just stayed on him enough until he uh, agreed uh, to write a song. And so I uh, went to Austin. He said, come to Austin and, and we can sit down and write. And so I go, uh, he says, come to Austin. We'll eat lunch and write a song. And I thought, okay, well, cool. We'll, we'll go grab a bite somewhere, and then we'll go somewhere where we can kind of hold up and be creative and write a song. And uh, he said, meet me at Rudy, Rudy's Barbecue off I-35 uh, on the north side of Austin. So I, I pull up, and I walk over. And how many of you have seen Walt Wilkins before? Anybody? Have you seen him? Okay. It, like I imagine that he's probably the closest thing that I'm ever going to get to a writing appointment with somebody that looks like Jesus. So, I, I get to I get to uh, I get to uh, Rudy's barbecue and I just start looking around for Jesus, and there he is sitting at this uh, at one of the park benches in between the gas pumps and the serving line, and uh, and he's got his guitar and his notebook at the picnic table. So he meant have lunch and write a song. Yeah. He didn't mean Let's we'll eat lunch. somewhere and then go write. So, <laughs> so we wrote uh, the first song we ever wrote together at Rudy's Barbecue off I-35 in Austin. And uh, <clears throat> you can imagine we got some pretty funny looks because it was, you know, like, you know, lunch uh, at, in the middle of rush hour for lunch, right? So... Uh, we write this song, and at the time there was a there was a drought in Austin, and we were sitting there talking about ideas to write. And uh, Walt said, "Man, I, I had this dream. I had a dream that it that it finally rained last night, and like all the rivers were flowing again." And uh, so that's kind of where this uh, where this song started. It's called "What I Dreamed Last Night," and one of the coolest things for me uh, as a songwriter ever uh, was to have. A song that Walt Wilkins and I wrote uh, for him to put it on his record. So it's been on a couple of his records, and then I put it on one of mine. It's called What I Dreamed Last Night. were full and shiny and rivers ran with silver linings the hills were green as Ireland the fields had grass as high as our hopes for a golden harvest we'd weathered through the hardest season we ever faced God surely bless this place And there'd always be more rain Well, that's what I dreamed last night And no children ever went missing and mamas always listen, yeah, and daddies always stay. And every girl a princess, and every boy a witness to the way this all could be. There was never another childhood stripped away Yeah, that's what I dreamed last night mm -hmm. And I dreamed I dream more that we forever ended war over golden oak 
over borders of someone's high and holy orders. And while the generals rattled their blades, we all gathered in the shade. Cause every soldier made it home today. Yeah, every single soldier made it home today. That's what I dream last night. Yeah. But what I dream last night. What I dream less Thank you very much. Walt Wilkins at a picnic table at Rudy's Bar. Most awkward writing appointment that I've had today. <laughs> you never know sometimes. You don't. You don't. So what's the weirdest uh, what's the weirdest writing appointment that you've had? You don't even have to name names. The weirdest like, one? What, yeah, what was the weirdest most oh, awkward geez. writing appointment? I don't know. So many. <laughs> hey, for those like it's kind of like um, imagine you're going to get together to do something really kind of like I mean it's somewhat intimate, especially dependent upon what yeah. the subject matter is of the song that you're going to write. You know, you might be trying to bear your soul and somewhat yeah. like an arranged marriage. Yeah, you never know. It's kind of like a weird. It's one of those weird moments where you get you're like, hey, uh, so uh, what do you got? Uh, nothing. Uh. What do you got? I don't have anything either. Oh, great. <laughs> but I got this. <laughs> you always have something. But no, I think one of the, uh, maybe not the weirdest, but one of the funniest ones for me was uh, uh, Willie called me up and he was like, hey man, you want to you wanna write some tunes? Uh, we just signed a record deal with Sugar Hill and uh, I need to get some, uh, I just have to have a arsenal of songs to throw at him, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'd, I'd love to be involved in that, that sounds great. I thought I was gonna be rich for a minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, so anyway, I went over to the house, and he had this, his bedroom, he had this this bed that he had built, like that was about uh, probably four feet off the ground, and uh, underneath it, he had a little writing area it had a, a little uh, love seat and like four or five lava lamps and <laughs> it was a very interesting room to be in <laughs> but anyway went in there and he had his coffee table set up in front of it and so we went in and we sat down and I was like this is where you write and he's like sometimes <laughs> Like, let's see what happens. <laughs> but I was like, uh, we don't have to close the tapestry, do we? <laughs> it's like, no, we can leave it wide I'm open. Gonna, I'm not even going to follow him down this trail. <laughs> but no, we just sat down and, uh, and we wrote uh, Nobody's Girl. That was the song that we ended up writing in there. And uh, it was funny, after we wrote that, I was like, why don't we ride out back on the patio from now on? <laughs> feeling a little uncomfortable. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so talking about, uh, you know, Willie, and obviously we've got Gary here and there's Cody. Uh, tell, tell the folks a little bit, whether they're, you know, listening or watching the, the video podcast. I mean, when you guys said earlier that it's like you, you haven't ever really been home for six months straight until now, like you're not kidding because you've been doing this music thing since you were little, you've been running yeah. around doing shows and on the road. When did you guys first 
When, when were you first in the family band? What ages were you guys? And tell us a little bit about what that was like uh, growing up in the music business. Uh, well, I got up on stage when I was five. That was the first time I got on stage, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't a paying gig just yet. But uh, we started playing. But then we were on the uh, the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson when I was uh, seven. Did and, y'all just hear that? And that's when <laughs> the we started. We pretty much were on the road in the summertime. From then on, and we had the the winners off. You know, we for the most part we'd do a New Year's show or two or whatever, and a Christmas show or two. And but for the most part, we had uh, a lot of time off during the winter. But the summer times, we were on the road, playing at rodeos or fairs or uh, wherever. It was all over the the United States. So we just kind of traveled, and that's what we did. And then. Uh, Cody and Willie left when I was 13, and went. They went to uh, to Oregon and started Reckless Kelly, and uh, Gary and I kind of quit for a little while, and uh, I kept playing bass with uh, a little blue uh, bluegrass band in Stanley, and uh, I kept playing bass with my dad too on certain shows, and um, but for the most part, i have just kind of always kept. Kept the nose down and keep going, you yeah. know. And when did forward. Mickey and the Motor Cars officially start? Uh, we started in 2001. That was our, our first year. So we're 20 years this year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Congratulations. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's a big Thank deal. Thank you. Okay. So, and you can answer this question if you want to answer it. But uh, so show business type families, you know, uh, what was it? I mean, I've got kids that would say they were interested in music and some of them still are but they would say they were interested in music and like you know teach me some chords on the guitar or this or that or whatever but then it's like pulling teeth to try to get them to want to practice or whatever what right. was it like around y'all's house did y'all just all take to it or no, was it, was it the was, same for my dad he had was like <laughs> He was frustrated as well. No, it was like he didn't make us play. Like he made everything available for us, you know. But I think growing up, it was like we all like, oh, I want to play the accordion. It's like so he gets us an accordion. And it's like, yeah, I hate you. you know? <laughs> like, like Cody and Willie, for example, one year <clears throat> for Christmas, he bought them like a fiddle and a set of drums or a guitar, and uh, he gave the fiddle to Willie and the guitar to Cody, and they traded like two weeks later. So I mean, it's kind of how kids are. They just, we just tried everything and he kept us, made it fun enough to where we stayed interested in it, but eventually he kind of just like let us make our own decision on the deal. It wasn't forced and I don't think, you can't force a kid to do anything. I think everybody knows that. Not well. Anyway. Not well, yeah, yeah. Have you seen the Jackson 5 like, my documentary? <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying your dad was not Joe Jackson? No, no, my dad was not no. Joe Jackson. Well, he tried a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he was. That's a joke. <laughs> Pick another song for us, either one of you. What's your fa I'll, I'll ask you, Gary, like, what's your favorite motor cars song uh, that you guys do every night on stage? Um, I'd say probably the one that I like the most out of all the years that still we play every night is Carolina Morning, which mm -hmm. uh, uh, a good friend, kind of our mentor guy in Idaho, aside from my dad and uncles and stuff, was Pino Bennett. He was a guy that hung out with my dad all the time and they wrote songs together. And He was just kind of one of those people that we looked up to and we were around all the time, so he kind of set a heavy influence on me and my brothers. And Carolina Morning, we he actually just passed away this year, so like, mm -hmm. oh, it kind of even means more to me now than it probably ever has, but wow. that would probably be one of my favorite tunes that we do. Mm -hmm. Can y'all play that one for us? Sure. Two, three, four. Because I know your love for me is right 
But the sun will rise on you in Carolina It's gonna set on me in Tennessee tonight I've had Carolina mornings and California nights Times and places in between I found to be alright but it feels so good that it's understood I took that warning I love you on a Carolina morning Tomorrow night I leave for California And after that I might go home to Idaho but the sun will rise on you in Carolina And girl, where it sits on me, I just don't know I've had Carolina mornings and California nights Times and places in between I found to be all right but it feels so good that it's understood I took that warning Love you on a Carolina morning Maybe you could visit me in Nashville Check out Music Row in Opry Land And you can get to know my friends But more than likely I'd just show up without a warning And love you on a Carolina morning I've had Carolina California nights Times and places in between I found to be alright But it feels so good that it's understood I took without warning Love you on a Carolina morning It feels so good that it's understood I took Without a warning, love you on a Carolina morning. Thank you. Thank you. Man, that's such a great song. All right. Are y'all doing okay? Is everybody having fun so far? Okay. Not bad for a Tuesday night, right, in, in, in the Woodlands. I, I told you I was going to take, uh, you know, a, a minute and have my, my, my Porter Wagner moment uh, at the Grand Ole Opry where I'll tell you a little bit about our spot. Without the sequins, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't have the course. sequins. Yeah. But... Uh, Tell you a little bit about our sponsors. Um, our, our friends from Chicago Title Houston couldn't be here with us tonight, but they are uh, sponsors of ours this season. And, and of course, you know, I mean, for the last 14 years, it goes without saying that Dosey Do has been our, you know, supporter and our sponsor just for letting us do what we do here, you know. And uh, so we, we love them and appreciate their, their commitment to the quality of sound and and the experience that the artists have and, and everything else, we're truly blessed. I, I live right over in Magnolia, and, and to, have, um, to, to have this be the place that we get to you know, craft our show is just an amazing thing. And then, of course, they're here with us tonight, and you've got some uh, gifts from them in front of you. The koozie's designed to keep your beer um, extra cold, so make sure you take, uh, take those home, with, or your juice box, your juice box. It'll keep your juice box really cold, so... 
take take one of those home with you. Uh, my friends at the Griffin Realty Group, I've known them, gosh, probably for a good part of seven years now or something like that. And uh, in addition to knowing the market around here and, uh, you know, Gosh, I don't know. You know, I'm a homeowner in the area, and what's going on around here and it is just crazy. Um, and at this moment, in order to navigate uh, really what's going on in a real estate market like ours here, you really got to have somebody that knows what they're doing and what they're talking about. And the Griffin Real Estate Group is, they're on track to have helped 100 families um, sell, uh, buy and sell properties this year, uh, which is a new record for them. And uh, man... I always say do business with people in your community that love and support the same things you do. And real estate is one of those things where you got to have a licensed person that knows what they're doing to help facilitate the transaction. So use somebody that supports the stuff and loves the stuff that you love in your community. And the Griffin Realty Group is that um, for musicians and for songwriters. And so thank you guys for everything you do to make nights like this possible. And if you need anything, say hi to them on, on your way out. Um, okay, so, man, we're, we're not done yet, but uh, I, I want to go a little further back, and, and I want to ask you, what is, you, you said you guys have been around for, for as Mickey and the Motor Cars for 20 years now. What is, what is the oldest Motor Cars song that's still in your set? I mean, you're going to have to play it until the very end, uh, the very last show of Mickey and the Motor Cars. What, what song is that, and tell us about it. Um, I would say the oldest one, without a doubt, that we play, I would say, 75% of the time. Uh, it just kind of depends on the night, but uh, I would say it's a song called The Band Song. And it's a song I wrote in uh, Stanley, Idaho, up in uh, up above a, a fishing shop, a uh, tackle shop. And uh, I was teaching my... My good friend uh, Mark McCoy had to play bass at the time, doing my best to teach him how to play bass, I guess you should say. And um, anyway, I was teaching him a, a chord progression. And uh, so he was getting it down, and I had this little practice amp, and I had my acoustic guitar, and he was playing my old uh, uh, Mustang bass. And uh, anyway, I was like, he goes, what? Uh, he goes, what song is that? And I was like, I, it's not a song. It's just that's just a chord progression. And he goes, well, I kind of like the chord progression. And I was like, all right, <laughs> well then, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so I went down, and there was a it was a two bedroom apartment above the place, and uh, so I went down into my room, and uh, I wrote this song in about I don't know, it was probably twenty minutes, something like that, wow. and it was basically about just us, what we were doing at the time, and the summer, and um, getting a band together and having fun with your friends. And anyway, I went back and we started working on it and played it. And then as the band progressed, we kept playing it. And I never thought in my wildest dreams that I'd be playing it every single night because it was like, Jesus, <laughs> the song's not really that great. You know? <laughs> but the crowd seemed to like it. So your version of the summer is 69. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, we've basically been playing it almost every night for 20 years. But well, it's don't, a, don't it's stop a, now. Yeah, I'll play it for you. <laughs> I wake up. Go to work Then I come home And I put on a clean shirt I go to the phone bill I call up the boys See if they're ready to go downtown And make some noise Grab a guitar I try and get in the mood to go play for five hours for free beer and food. Yeah, we're doing all right. Yeah, we're feeling fine. 
way I know that it's gonna take time Stayed all night Watching the sun come up Time to swing by the coffee cart for a hot cup Back to the apartment now, baby We're laughing about where we've been It's time to get cleaned up Cause it's Saturday night And we get to go out Do it all over again Yeah, we're doing all right Yeah, we're feeling fine we all know that it's gonna take time yeah, We all know that it's gonna take a long, 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 long time Maybe too long a time Too long a time You should know it's a long, hard ride Tonight we're Thank you. They still like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it is. It is catchy. Okay, so uh, you mentioned earlier the song that you wrote. Uh, is it uh, guitar change time? I think the battery died. Gotcha. It's like playing, like when you have a remote control when you're a kid and it's, you're having a blast for like 10 minutes and then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. Party's over. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Give a big hand for the tour managing Travis. sound man. Travis Neal, ladies and gentlemen. Hurting the cats that are Mickey and the motor cars. Yes. <laughs> Hey, that one sounds good. And let's not forget about our merchandise guy, Houston, over here. Yep. And Houston is, uh, he is patiently waiting for you guys to come lighten the load that he will have to carry back out to the van. And uh, gosh, all kinds of Thanksgiving uh, stocking stuffers over there oh, that yeah. you should go yeah, buy. Christmas is just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween is always a good gift. <laughs> you never know. You might want to go as a motor car fan. You might. You might. Okay. It's very simple. You just put on a hat, a shirt, a koozie, maybe a vest. Anything that we sell over there. <laughs> oh man. Heck. Okay. Speaking of, uh, you know, we 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 you talked about Willie earlier. And when you talk about merchandising, Willie has some fairly creative um, strategies for selling merchandise. And yeah. one of my favorites is, uh, do you guys carry the shakuzi in your merch? <laughs> it's the shakuli. The shakuli. Okay. No, we do not. <laughs> have, have you seen the shakuli commercial? It well, it's a it's a koozie that that has a suction cup on it, if I remember right. It's a, yeah, that, it's so you can have your beer in the shower without it spilling because you just stick it. <laughs> to the wall on your um, so I'm, I'm not saying whether they do or don't have it over there but go over to the merch table because you might find something equally as cool as the Shakuli um, but your brother uh, going back to your brother Willie you had mentioned a song that you guys wrote uh, in your first writing appointment in his Hugh Hefner uh, style yeah. writing room <laughs> um, called called Nobody's Girl and you guys put it on a live record uh, that you recorded in Germany um, yeah. that was the prior release prior to your most recent studio record. So yeah. tell, tell us about playing for the fans over there and then you guys play, play your version of Nobody's Girl. Well, 
uh, playing over there is is it's a lot it's a, it's a lot more like uh, playing here at the Dosi Do. It's more of a listening room kind of a situation. Everybody's it's usually. And if it's sit down or not, it just kind of, most of the time it is sit down, but a lot of times it's you know standing room only. But people just they listen to the stories, and you can tell stories in between songs, and you can kind of create uh, some fun uh, stories to let people know how the song came about, and yada yada. And uh, but they're they're very interesting. In the way that they they'll come up to you and ask you after after the show like we've played over there so many times now that they'll come up to us and they'll be like, "Why are you not playing the J forty five tonight?" Oh wow! <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're very particular. Like, uh, they notice uh, everything over there. It's like, yeah. how come you didn't smoke a cigarette during that song? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> four years ago, you smoked a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, well, well, we like to change it up. <laughs> yeah, they're very uh perceptive. Very perceptive. Yeah. Yes. But it's uh it's really fun playing over there, going to different towns and seeing different parts of the country and uh we always have fun uh playing, but they they do pay attention to everything, so you gotta be kinda careful what you do. <laughs> the next time you come around you might have to do that again. Like, Why didn't you jump into the crowd this time? I don't know, it's kind of just going off the, off the cuff, buddy. But yeah, we wrote this one, uh, like I said, in, in Willie's bedroom. <laughs> An interesting place. <laughs> First man that you ever loved and left your mama never said goodbye to anyone. You raised with your head held high and any fool could see it's a clever disguise. You're nobody's baby, you're nobody's darling, you're nobody's girl. You've always been a little scared to open your heart You never let anybody take it too far You never let them on the inside You're always scared of getting taken for a ride You're nobody's baby You're nobody's darling You're nobody's girl Yeah, well, everybody wants you, but you don't want to care So you keep him at a distance with a friend you wear You spend your time trying to even the score And you got it in your head, you deserve a lot more The first one was a total disaster So was the second one and everyone after But when you're breaking in a broken home You'd count on bed short and spend some nights on your own When you're nobody's baby You're nobody's darling You're nobody's girl you're nobody's baby Nobody's darling yeah. Nobody's girl Nobody's girl You're nobody's girl Thank you Have y'all had a good time tonight?
Everybody here? Yeah. Hit and it. I too. We got time for a couple more. Why don't y'all uh you just pick what you wanna what you wanna play. Seeds? See. Let's see if I can pull it off. I wrote this song, I was, uh, was living in my 57 Chevy panel wagon in Idaho. Literally. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. And we put it on our record. And my grandma, and Mary, it was her favorite song on the record. And she thought it was called Tiny Bag of Peas. <laughs> she couldn't hear too well. But any time in the last few years, street life's been my way. Been traveling around from town to town, trying to make peace. And every place I stop at, they just turn me away. I say, sorry, son, if you got no cash, there's no way that you can't stay. And all I own is a suitcase, carry on my back. It holds a picture of my mom and dad in a letter saying, please someday come back. My ex girlfriend's worn out necklace and a book of broken beads. A church key and some bottle caps and a tiny bag of seeds. I slept last night under an underpass. Warm. Thinking back on the time and place I called home. The front porch upon Mountain View, you'd never hear a sound. Just a nice warm breeze blowing through the trees. No one else around. And all I own is this old suitcase that I hit by the track. Got a picture of my mom and dad in a letter. It says, please someday come back. My ex girlfriend's worn out necklace and a book I never read. There's a church key and some bottle caps and a tiny bag of seeds. Started hiking yesterday, might have made 40 miles. My boots are wearing thin now, they lost all their style. I wish I had a dollar to call you on the phone. Till then, I might get picked up For tonight I want to go home With all I own is a old suitcase That I hide down by the tracks There's a picture of my mom and dad In a letter that says Please someday come back my ex-girlfriend's worn out necklace and a book I never read. There's a church key and some bottle caps and a tiny bag of seeds. Just a church key and some bottle caps and a tiny bag of seeds. Thank you. Man, guys, I just want to tell you again on behalf of myself and, and everybody here tonight, thanks for 
taking time out beginning of the week this week to come down and hang out with us in the woodlands tonight and let us hear a little bit more about your your music and appreciate it man thank you so much for having us like i said before we don't get to do this very often so it's fun to pull some old ones out and uh play songs that we love to play that we wrote a long time ago i haven't played that in probably it's been a long time i can't even tell you Man, well, thank you for sharing that one with us. That's yeah. a great song for Sorry, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I could remember it. <laughs> as soon as I started, I was like, damn it. <laughs> You're safe with us. You're safe with us, Vicky. Well, are you guys going to hang around and sign some shirts and whatever Absolutely. people want to buy over there? Don't forget your Griffin Realty koozies. Take them with you. And, uh, man, y'all want to y'all wanna play us another one? Take us home with something. You want to play one? You want one? Let's see here. I want to. I want to play something fun. Do uh, get your harp. Do, uh, do July. Uh, Dad taught me this song a long time ago. I uh, I was on the bass guitar I was playing with him and uh, and then I went over and I started playing with this bluegrass band and they taught me uh, a different version of the same song and I took the two and I smashed them together when we started the motor cars and uh, this is our version <laughs> but the funny funny thing it's an old John Stewart song one of my favorite tunes it's called July You're a Woman One, two, three, four. Sitting right beside me, and girl, I'm drunk out of my mind. Merely from the fact that you aren't here. And I've not been no as the saints are saying, well, okay, I just assume right now. Pull on over to the side of the road I'll show you what I mean And la da la da 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 la da la da 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 I'd say the white lines out before me. Girl, you sitting there, you got your hand on my collar, you're talking in my ear. And I have been around with a gypsy girl named Shanna, she's a daughter of the devil. Ain't it strange that I should mention her to you? Haven't thought of that girl in years. La -da -la -da 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 -da. La -da -la -da 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 -da
I came holding on the road Sitting right beside me Girl, I'm drunk out of my mind Barely from a fact Baby, you, you just aren't here No, you're not here And I have been around With a gypsy girl named Shanna She's the daughter of the devil Ain't it strange you'd ask She'd mention her to you Haven't thought of that girl In years and years and years Oh Thank you all so very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey and Gary Braun. Thank you.